I do not recommend this build. I'm just playing it because Blue White Approach is my baby, but Mono Red and Aggressive decks have kind of taken over the format at the moment, and there's not really much we can do to our deck to significantly increase those win percentages. Um, there's not really a lot I would do. If, if I was worried about trying to beat them, I might move like the three ops out of the main deck and bring in another settle, another meltdown, and maybe the essence scatter out of the side and then put a fourth authority or a fourth cat in the sideboard, maybe even a baffling end, but uh, maybe a couple baffling ends. But uh, I'm not really trying to beat those decks. Um, it just seems like you have to jump through so many hurdles to beat those decks that it's not worth it and that you end up losing to your good matches. So, I just don't think this is well positioned in the metagame at the moment. But like I said, we're just playing it because it's our baby. I like to try to play it at least once a week. Alright, so we have a pretty good hand here. There is some decks that we would cycle to sensor versus. Certainly not Mono Mountain dot deck. So... We already got paired versus one of those matches right off the bat that I said we probably won't beat. I was hoping to kind of dodge these, or like only play one out of the five matches, but less than optimistic when we get one right out the gate. And they have their best turn one play too, which is disappointing. The positive note is usually when they do this, that means they're playing Akari Zev, so we'll get some value out of the sensor. This match is winnable. It's just really bad. It seems like they have a good draw, too. Um, it's a good chance that if they're leading with cards like this, that they are going all the way up to the hazard at this game, which is kind of bad for us. <sighs> I don't have another land that's not terrible, but... Because whatever they play this next turn, we can at least fumigate. They may like or even rethink attacking with something. Or they may just jam it and not care. Since them getting lands right now is actually good for them. Oh, he's actually protecting that. That's sweet. We get to save a point of damage. Uh, we don't actually want either of these. So we're going to go back up to 14. This so might be a game we can still, if they don't have, like, land into Chandra or land into Hazard this turn. And even if they do have either of those plays, there's, like, some chance we can steal it with an opt. It's just, like, not real likely. How's the frames looking today? So far, so good. But yeah, like you can see, they've not really even done much, and they've missed the land drops, yet they've still like kind of easily got us to 11. I think I'm going to go ahead and play this. I feel like I need to. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put that one on top. Prevents three damage a turn for basically the rest of the game in this spot. Shows a large amount of damages. <laughs> Unfortunately, as well as this game's going for us, like, we're still not even out of the woods. Especially, again, if he has a land and a four drop, we're in serious trouble. Go ahead and pop that off. So we'll go ahead and write a six down, so as we know it's six cards after our draw step. 
probably going to need to find at least one more settle of this game. Maybe one more Fumigate to close it out. Really depends on whether he hits his land or not. Fumigate will probably be good enough. If he doesn't, we'll probably have to have settle if he does. We could just always untap and draw the other dude, you know? Alright, so we know it's five cards after this. That way if we draw a rivulet, we know we win. Alright, so that's beautiful. We now know we win next turn, and we can protect ourselves from everything. Even Lightning Strike. Lightning Strike wouldn't kill us. He'd have to have, like, Lightning Strike at end of turn, and Lightning Strike plus Shock. And then we'd still have some redraw with the Glimmer. Like, we wouldn't be completely dead. We could, like, you know, Glimmer into a sensor or something in that scenario. So we are going to steal game one, it looks like. Yep, definitely going to steal game one now. Shock's not even enough. Shock puts it up to 11 damage. There's no way for him to get the other five. If he'd had to land in another shock, sure. And whatever these two cards are, they just go to the bottom. It doesn't matter. This is four cards. And then the card we draw for the turn is Approach. Didn't need to really play the land. I don't know why I do. It's just habit. Just habit. <laughs> but if he's doing the math, he knows we had it as well. Alright, so versus these matches, I typically bring in basically all of our white cards. The cats and the 40s to try to prevent us as much damage as humanly possible. And the Ixalan's bindings for his relevant threats. And the beautiful, beautiful, lovely little essence scatter. The first cards I take out are the slow blue cards. I have some friends that actually think you're supposed to keep Settled uh, Search for Ascanti in, and they could be right, I don't know, but I've had more success taking them out. And then, after you get past that, you generally start taking your most expensive cards out first. So, we generally cut just a couple of disallows. Um, sure, they're fine in like the mid-game, but... You'd rather have them on the play than the draw. On the draw, you really have to rely for your sensors pretty hard here. Um, also, some of the games do come out grindy. If you think they're going to go with the completely four Glorybringer package, four Chandra package, which may be what's getting popular now. Like, if they're doing all that, there's some argument into just keeping in the disallows and, like, maybe removing a few sensors on the draw, but... I don't know that everybody's on that plan yet, so... Kind of just like hedge and go for something that I think is fine versus both builds. Another another Beaumont carry on turn one, and this one, where he's already mulliganed, will certainly be able to net home cards at some point. We're not going to get like a fumigate on this. Um, there's some percentage chance that we could like sneak a cast out on it, but like that's even pretty unlikely. And we'd probably have to let him resolve a rather good spell for that to even happen. But the Beaumont can go all the way by itself. And if he, like, follows it up with a, yeah, that card, like, we are in serious trouble. And generally, what he just did is enough to beat our deck. Which is one of the reasons that this deck is so weak in this matchup. Like, he didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> You go ahead and counterspell that, because like I said again, it's just absurdly good versus us. Uh, if he's not playing anything for two, your sensor will probably get value on whatever the next spell he's playing in anyway. So your sensor's basically an essence scatter in this spot. You really have to draw a settled wreckage. Take a minimum of another three damage this turn. or Sorry, four damage. I misspoke. So down to 10, then down to 7 next turn, assuming we don't draw Settle. We potentially could draw a cat in time, but... If he's got any burn spells in his hand, or whatever, we're probably got. But 
Maybe not. The Walmart Courier could always be weak, you never know. I assume he'll attack with it this time, because I assume he's willing to discard his hand for whatever that is. There's five cards. Just have to hope he doesn't get a lot of hasties. He'll probably sack it, because five random cards is probably better than four cards when he has no land. Oh, if he has a shock, that was just easy. Uh, don't know. Don't know what he thought about once he has the shock. Like, that was a snap play. It's probably a snap play either way. So what we're really hoping here is, like, he plays, like, Land, Soskar, Mage, Karlzev or something. Like, that'd be the best possible for us. Or even that Karlzev, that's fine. So we get to go back up to 6, then we're going to take some damage on this next turn, then back up to 13. Well, 13 minus whatever the damage is. So, like, there's some world where, like, Approach Approach just wins. Have to get to Approach Approach, like, we're not there yet. He didn't have a 4-drop, so they could just be Glorybringers. We can beat Glorybringers. Can't beat a bunch of burn spells in Glorybringers. Alright, it was just one burn spell. One burn spell into Chandra. Alright, he can't play that, so that's good. So any Sackler and we probably win the game. Didn't get a Sackler, but that card's actually not bad here. It'll depend on what he does with his turn. So he could buy back his one dude and we go up to eight and he has six damage in play. So like any burn spell kills us, but like we have, have a bunch of outs to this situation. So we know it's the t card on top of our library after we draw our card this turn. And that's probably enough to stall the game. It's going to be very hard for him to kill us through that. From 8 life with one draw step only. And we know approach is the next card. We had, we had quite a few draws here. Um... Ever Meltdown did it. This did it. Uh, so we had six in those draws. Any Settled or Wreckage did it. Any Fumigate did it. That's another five cards. Two Approaches did it. So like, we just had a million cards, really. And we're just protecting our life total now because we know the Approach is on top of our library unless we did Horrendous Math. Which, considering I'm writing it down, it's pretty hard to have done that bad of math. But it's possible. Yeah, so we got past our worst match. Got real lucky. Ran pretty good. He missed land drop three, both uh, game one and game two. We got to take it any way we can get it. <laughs> any way we can get it, boys. What if I should just build this deck, design it to beat mono red and nothing else? I think that would actually do well in the leagues at the moment. I think there's enough mono red in the leagues that you could probably win 60% of your matches if you just did that. Maybe more? I wonder if there's a way I could design this deck to play... Versus just, you know, when I say mono red, I also mean like the black red aggro decks and the Mardu vehicle decks, how you attack all of them is roughly the same manner. So I wonder if there was a way that we could like build this deck to combat versus just that deck and just Grixis, because that's honestly like, that's like 75% of my matches. 
Anyway, next round's up. And this hand's pretty good. Another mono red deck. This hand is significantly less good. Though in all fairness, double approach isn't actually that terrible versus mono red. And he could be like black red or, you know, like red black or whatever. But like I said, they're all roughly the same thing. Um, he didn't play a good two drop, so odds are all of his spells are three drops. And if, if it's not, we can at least still cycle this if we feel like it. Yeah, so it's a burn spell? Sure. We'll take the extra damage. I'm actually going to hold the sensor for one more turn. That's not fun. Two extra damage from his lands. It's a good chance that I cycle the sensor this turn. Well, we'll keep that one. Hmm. To take two damage or not to take two damage? You can find taking two damage because we can just fumigate and gain that life back. Really hoping for no Chandra here. That one's kind of a wreck. Now we're kind of hoping for a cast out. Don't want you, don't want you, like specifically looking for certain cards at this point. Oh look, we got one of them anyway. That card's beautiful. Uh, and discard you. Kind of play our hand face up here. It's pretty easy for him to realize that uh, we're going to cast Settle this turn. So he probably doesn't attack with the Fumigate. He probably only attacks with the two Soulscar Mages. Really needed to draw a cast out this game. That would have been best case for us. There's a world if we can just like melt down the hazard and untap and play Fumigate. <laughs> I guess it depends on what he does this turn. It's probably kind of unlikely. Yeah, I think it's unlikely. This thing represents quite a bit of damage. Our best opportunity to win this game is like cast out into untapped land. Phoenix, you say. Well, there's the untapped land. I don't think we can stop that, really.
weird. How is it not better for him to throw two damage at me than do that? Either way, it's enough to kill us. But I don't quite understand how it wasn't better to do it in a different manner. Oh, because he's not going to attack with those? Wow. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, that just feels great. Still take one down to six. Then down to four, then back to eleven, and then four, five, six, seven, eight. So assuming the card in his hand and the card he draws aren't good, we might steal this game? We can only see 10 damage. That's including two hazard activations. He didn't use the hazard, so. Six damage on board. Even two lightning strikes doesn't do it, right? It's just another hazard. So five, nine, 10, that's just 12. If it's a lightning strike, we're dead. Oh, wow, he's got that too? Oh my gosh. How amazing was that? That's exactly 13, I think, but I'm too lazy to actually do the math right now. <sighs> so we about stole that game. Uh, that's a bit of a tilt. We, we dang near stole that game. He didn't have to, he didn't have a lot of draws. He basically had to have a hazard plus something that did three damage. Oh, not supposed to win this match anyway, but it would have really been nice to uh, to steal that one. Sideboarding the same way we did last match. We were, we were on to draw that match, wasn't we? Yeah, we were on to draw that match. We would have won that match on the play. Or game, sorry. Game. Game, game, game. Would have won that game on the play. Maybe we should have played the Fumigate turn different. I'm not sure. Could have Fumigated the one turn, but then I would have took probably five from the Hazard. It's close. Not sure. I have to put some thought into it. Thought we had that one, though. Thought we had that one when he didn't throw two damage at us. When he didn't throw the two damage at us, I, or like play a lightning strike at the end of turn, I kind of expected a hazard, which meant like he was drawing pretty thin for a three damage spell. Uh, Alright, so this is kind of an interesting thing. This card is so good in this match that you have to keep very mediocre draws like this. Like, the, the amount of games you win with this card and the amount of games you win without this card are so drastically different and you're far enough behind in this match that you have to get a little lucky. So you've got the option where I can mulligan and try to hit lands, but then I probably don't have the spell I have. Or I can just get this, maybe draw land on turn two, maybe not draw land on turn two, but even if I don't draw land on turn two, like I don't think the game's just over. Whereas I feel like the majority of the games that I don't have this out by turn two are probably over. Now his build's a little bit different. He had phoenixes in his main deck, so that could be very wrong. Really hoping to not see another Beaumont. Eh, three games versus mono... Sorry, four games versus mono red, and we saw Beaumont on turn one, three of them. Which is absurdly unlikely. Uh, so we hit our land. We have a functionable draw. Do 
got our best card in cast out. We have an opt to try to find more lands. Oh, my courier's still going to do a lot of work, though. He's emptying his uh, hand in a hurry as well. Wouldn't mind to just draw a land and not have to worry about this turn. Alright, we'll keep that. Basically keeping any land at this point. So, so far, so far the authority has gained us three life. It's gained us a two life for the creatures and a one life for the haste attack, and it stopped our opponent from getting a card. So you can see, like, how relevant that card is here. Would censor anything that is censorable this turn? If not, we'll cycle at minimum one censor, maybe two. Let's go ahead and yield to this trigger so we don't have to keep looking at it. Not willing to censor that. I lied. Not censoring a 1 1. I'd rather look for a land and censor that. I think it has done enough damage on average. Those two are going to be a problem. So like next turn he's going to be able to draw five more cards. Okay opponent. What are we waiting on? When I wish I was smiling. <laughs> well, a boo.
So the phone's having some connection issues. Sorry about the dead air for those uh, watching. Um, hmm. Trying to decide whether it's worth the cycling of the other sensor, but I don't think it is. I think we have the same opportunity to do that on the next turn most often than not. The odds of him playing a four drop are pretty low. I think he'll play a four drop into four open mana. Though he could just to like clear the way for settle. I, I find it unlikely that he's playing a four drop with these two things out there though. I won't say impossible. Just say unlikely. Yeah, he's definitely playing around settle, which is something we love. Pause here like we're thinking about it. Gamesmanship, my friends. We're not, we'll allow that. We, we won't use our settle right now. Improvised Rampage. Kind of interesting. Good amount of damage. He's using it on two different targets. All correct. A bunch of damage. So now we're looking for an untapped land. <clears throat> I think we're actually going to cycle one more cast out as well. Probably save this last one for whatever he plays. Post combat. <laughs> JK, we've got a binding. Now he might discard his two cards in his hand, which was a Hazret and a Glorybring. He discarded a Hazret and a Glorybringer for three random cards. Mind blown. Look what he got out of it, too. That's pretty sick. Go ahead and get the binding on it in case he has more than one. Pia, not real worried about a Pia. The Thopter can do a lot of damage, but I think we're just going to go ahead and play the Caracal. I think it's a higher percentage for us to win. He's got six mana, so he could be bringing back a Kenra. Which Kenra doesn't block in this situation, so that's Gucci by us. He's certainly not attacking with the 2 2. Okay. <laughs> I thought our opponent was attacking with the 2 2 for a second. I was like, what? Yeah. So let's get our life leech on. If he blocks, I will put an effort meltdown on this to prevent damage. And they're done. <laughs> I wonder what they thought we had to be done there. Because, like, in theory, if we don't have anything in our hand, like, this locks the board down, and this kills us in a very fast clock. I mean, we apparently, we obviously have something. That's just, that's a suspect concession. That concession's very early. Maybe he's just mad how he played the game. I'm not sure. Um, we're not changing anything from the play to the draw. Um, or, like, There's an argument that we could have left more disallows in on the play, but we definitely don't want them on the draw. On the draw, it's all about like staying above water. But you saw, you saw that game how like the 40 is the only reason we were in that game. So, like, we could keep such a suspect hand. 
And obviously this hand's very bad, but I don't think you can mulligan a sensor and a meltdown and a cast out. It's like some pretty important cards. All right, the fifth game versus Mono Red and the fourth Beaumont Courier on turn, turn one. Again, highly improbable. He's only even 44% to have it. So to have it in that many games in a row, or sorry, that many games out of five, um, obviously he's a little bit more to have it on a draw, but he's on the play this game. Just like incredibly lucky. And if, uh, all right, nice. He didn't have the sky ship, so. But I mean, we can't really complain about luck based on the fact that we're actually one and, uh, we're 1 0 on the match and we're somehow 1 and 1 in this game. Like we're already running above expectations. It's one of the beautiful things in a spot like this, like we're running well above expectations. Still have to worry about that Beaumont Courier, though, because it is the bad Juju. Yeah, so we can censor here, or we can melt down. I think I would rather censor and get the value of the censor what few turns that we can. We still have to disallow potentially on the next turn. I like how we're already down to five, by the way. He's just been bashing with that one thing. Still has four cards in his hand, but we do have one hard counter spell, and we do have a meltdown if a threat slips through. Can actually save that hard counter spell to use on his Beaumont in some situations as well, but that doesn't come up real often. Comes up often enough that you can like make comments on it, but it doesn't come up super often. Huh. I think we're gonna go ahead and disallow that. He could have a burn spell or whatever later to, like, get it off and underneath the meltdown. And because we drew this, we're going to go ahead and lock up this card. Whoops, clicked on the wrong one. Luckily, those don't cast instantly. So even if he plays like a Hazret and slaps us for five, like he can't really play the Hazret and slap us for five. He's not, not likely to get that many cards out of his hands. So more than anything, it would be most likely a Glorybringer here. Or like a Hazret no attack. And we're absolutely fine with Hazret no attack. Now we don't have to worry about another Hazret, and if he had a Glory Bringer, he would have probably played it on that turn. All right, so he is out of gas. We have a lot of things going on for us. Have hard answers to the next several spells. Have a good amount of life. Chandra's a good one. Hopefully he hits something like Chandra when he ticks it up, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Go down to 11. He's at one card. Would love to draw a cat. We go ahead and censor this or cycle this now because it wouldn't have done anything anyway. What do we got going on here? Five mana for a glory bringer. It's kind of interesting. I think we'll just use the meltdown on it though. Uh, one reason not to use the meltdown on it would be because of how good it is versus the cats, but um, I'd rather just have a cast out to make sure that the next Chandra doesn't just beat us or whatever. And the fumigate, leaving it on the table says like if he ever plays a sky captain or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's another reason to keep the cast out, though I did not expect that card, admittedly. Yeah, now we just gotta find an untap land. Before things go too far. Hmm. I'm actually just gonna play the Fumigate. Because the cat itself can win if, uh, like, he bricks off a turn or two. I 
Like, it gives us such a great thing. So it's like, as long as he doesn't draw another glory bringer, we feel great here. Mm. Jinx myself, it feels like, right off the top. If he attacks with this, we'll double block here, but... Uh, looks like we're just taking our four damage and hoping we draw our land. Not a land, but a settled wreckage isn't terrible. Yeah, that's not terrible for us either. <laughs> Draw this land sometime, likely. It's going to exert, it appears. May not exert, too. Who knows? It chose not to exert, so I'm just going to use the meltdown on it. actually pretty helpful I think our opponent's drawn nine lands so he's probably complaining but he doesn't know you know that if we'd been hitting our lands we would have been fine just gonna press f6 there we go and I don't think there's any way for him to really deal 15 damage with two cards, so. Especially when we have at least one blocker still. Like a Glorybringer doesn't even do it. Glorybringer couldn't attack this turn. We have the uh, authority. And we'll just go ahead and block here because this thing's going to die next turn anyway. I mean, we're going to win with this approach, but even if we wasn't going to win with the approach... Um, it wouldn't be able to block on the following turn anyway, so. Alright, so we got lucky and we've got through our worst match twice. Gotta win one out of the next three to lock up a pity chest. <laughs> They're not conceding. Alright, there they go. We beat a Beaumont five times, right? Have we beat have we beat the Beaumont all four times it was cast on us on turn one? I think this uh, is a pretty decent player. I recognize his name. I don't really remember what he plays. And this is a keepable hand. I'm going to play the Plains first because there's more decks that we would cycle to cast out versus than the Sensor. Though we're not likely to cycle either of them on the play versus very many decks at all. Very interesting. I can't imagine what he plays that is better than me just playing my search for Ascanta. This is probably like one of the Sulti decks. And like there's not a whole lot that they play I care about. This is one of the things that they play that I care about. It's practically the only one. I think it's the only one. Sneaky snake. Can't stop it. A lot of damage really quick. Alright, so we'll, we'll start with this. We'll second with this. These Sultai decks are kind of hard to beat because they have very fast clocks. They have extra card draw. 
they can win the games with just one or two threats, and they have a number of duresses, a number of negates, or, you know, like discard effects and counter spells. It doesn't necessarily have to be negates. But uh, more importantly, they can have Lost Legacy and a Planeswalker package that and it's hard to just beat all of that stuff. Like, there's so many different things, and it's hard to beat them all. Game one is our best chance, but we stupidly let him resolve this. I still think it's correct to play this, because, like, had he played a Snake turn one, or a Servant turn one, or a Brancher turn one, I don't care about any of those cards. It's only this Gallon turn one that I care about. Or, sorry, not turn one, uh, for his first play. Yeah, I can't talk. All right, well, we're sitting here waiting on another opponent. Um, clearly goes to the graveyard. Uh, this is a bit of an interesting turn. How badly do I care if he draws another card? And what can he resolve if he does? I think I'm fine with it. It's kind of unfortunate, but I think I'm fine with it because, like, Blossoming Defense and the Resolve spell is so bad for me that I I think it's fine to let him resolve one thing and then like hold up the essence scatter and the sensors. If he doesn't play anything, I'll try to cast out EOT. Odds are he's going to play something though. JK. <laughs> he's going to play nothing. Yeah, so that worked out really well. So an opt. Hmm. Based on our current mana, I think I would rather put the opt in our hand. We get to go two cards down when we play it, so. And the odds are we're going to play like Essence Scatter Meltdown or like Essence Scatter Sensor or Sensor Meltdown this turn. Basically, odds are we're going to play... Uh... Five mana worth, want to be able to play five mana worth of threats. I think I'm willing just to go ahead and try to prevent two damage. Uh, Fumigate, I think we're going to put on the bottom of our library based on us not having enough land yet. Farmlands to the graveyard? I don't think so. I think I'm actually going to keep that. I'm not super concerned about our dude not flipping this turn. Um, I would much rather just turn on the Fumigate in our hand. And we can cycle this sensor basically no matter what now, or we can use the Field of Rune. Basically speaking, we can flip the Search for Ascanta if we choose to next turn no matter what. There's nothing that would stop us from flipping it. Ah, so he played a bunch of things. I don't actually mind drawing more lands, so I'm going to censor before I consider using the Field. And now I'm just not going to use the field. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to have two, potentially three mana up. So I'm actually going to put the disallow in my hand. We're going to draw a random card. Then we're going to be able to flip this thing. Meltdown would go to the graveyard, yes. Transform, yes. And we didn't get their land, but I think it was still worth the try. So 
So land plus gear hulk would suck, but if it's just gear hulk, we have sensor. That would also suck, you know, like land, land plus five drop. I said gear hulk, but it's because I'm not educated. Oh, uh, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so we have a leftover mana no matter what. Just go ahead and get rid of this dude. I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and put him on bottom. I really just want lands at this point. Lands gives us the opportunity to play a disallow and use search for Ascantha all on the same turn if need be. Right, so it appears he just doesn't have anything else. Chupacabre. I'm actually going to go ahead and disallow that. I don't want to have to worry about dealing with it in two damage returns a bundle. Hello. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm going to wait for another land. I don't think there's any reason to let him just cast something for free. Because, like, if he, like, untapped and played an 8 8, he could potentially win or something. Whereas with this line, I'm not sure how he wins, assuming we draw a land. And he sees the approach from the Ascanta as well. JK, he doesn't actually see it. He saw the Essence Scatter. But... Alright. So we got game one. Game two and three, like I said, are just much, much harder because of the direct. The discard spells plus counter spells plus different avenues of attacking. Because, like, he's kind of like a fish deck that puts a lot of pressure on early, but also has a wonderful late game. Alright, so sideboarding versus them is pretty intricate. Um, first of all, since he has Scarab God, you never want Torrential Gear Hulks. By the way, um, Blue Black Chart and Grixis is so popular in this format, which is why this particular build of the deck has no Gear Hulks anywhere in it. But anyway, basically what I'm saying is you don't want to bring in the cats, unfortunately, because just them being able to, like, counterspell and or kill a cat and buy it back is so brutal that it's really hard to beat. The uh, Nezazal is something you can bring in if you expect them to try to, like, go really, really large versus you, you know, like, really, really slow or whatever. Uh, I typically don't expect them to ever make that sideboarding adjustment. I typically expect them to be a fish deck that's got some scarabs in it. Um, so that being said, basically the cards you want are things like Ixalan's Bindings, you want Essence Scatters, and you can have a couple of Negates if you want. I typically don't bring in the fourth Search for Ascanta, but that's mostly because with our Essence Scatters and our Sensors and our Meltdowns, we have so much that we're doing on turn two anyway that we're often not playing our Search for Ascanta until turn 4 and or 5. We have so much more opportunity to draw one anyway. But typically when I bring in these 5 cards in this situation, I think Sensors are really, really good still. They have a lot of uh, high mana cost. And they're not much worse than Ops when looking for lands. Or, they're considerably worse than Ops. But they're not worse enough that I don't want them. And... Uh, I typically cut a couple of disallows, but I've actually been rethinking that strategy lately. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to cut the disallows. If you know that they have Lost Legacy, you obviously have to bring in another kill condition, but on a blanket statement, I'm just going to assume they never have Lost Legacy. <laughs> Which could be very, very, very wrong. And if we see tons and tons of enchantment removal, we may remove one cast out and like bring the disallow back. Um, if, hey, uh a sister but like typically i expect a couple of Varaska's contempts maybe one naturalized but like if they have brontodons and the whole nine yards we would bring the disallow back uh this hand's actually not particularly great but we have so much that we can cycle in this hand that i think you just keep it anyway um it's kind of discard spell proof and like like i was saying you know like one of the best ways for them to beat us is random discard spells but it's very, very speculative, and if they have a good draw, it often doesn't get there, but I, I do slightly think it's above the Paragon for keeping. This card makes all of our sensors worse. Uh, 
spin cycle a two minute spell first. Cool. More cool draw land every turn of the game so far. All three of our draw steps have been lands. Oh, sorry, it's four draw steps, hasn't it? Yeah, we were on to draw this turn. So four four lands so far. Pretty difficult to beat, especially if they have a couple of negates. Another servant's nest. And they're keeping up mana. There's a cast out. Probably be casting it this turn on something. Is that two spells and seven cards so far? I think that's right, isn't it? Pretty hard to uh, do anything with a hand like that. Now he has to make the decision on whether he's going to like play around Settle the Wreckage, which is one of my favorite things, by the way. Or just take two, if that's all he's attacking with. Yeah, that card's actually good enough to just stone counter spell. Because he can already immediately put one counter on it. Guess who drew another land? You keep the 06 lander and you draw 6 out of 8 cards lands. Oh, well, we have to take another two here because whatever he plays past that's probably too powerful. I already think he has a negate in his hand, so that's like real bad for us. All right. Well, I'm willing to just go ahead and throw this on the winding constrictor then. Oh, well, we finally do have a settle. Maybe he'll just attack for four. Who knows? If only attacks with one, I'll probably still settle it here. I have to sneeze pretty fiercely. Okay, you can have that. Negate's probably not going to do anything. Though it does protect versus his first negate. Do have a good life total still if we can find spells. Glimmer would uh, be all smiley. That's not a glimmer. Uh, we'll take this damage again. The fact that he's not playing lands either at this point just m makes me feel like he's just got a bundle of reactive spells in his hand. So it means us drawing a spell is probably not good enough. There's some percentage chance that it would be. What is that for three? Sure. So we got one draw step for a fumigate, and that's all that we've got. Alright, so we are in fact dead. We did only draw five spells and 19 cards though, so. We have no out here at all. He couldn't even throw it away. Yep. 
Uh, like I said, couldn't even throw it away there. All right, so the game looked really bad that match, but I think it's still fine. Like any amount of spells seems good. We didn't really learn anything. Didn't really see any different cards, so I think I'm just gonna run the seventy or sixty back. Kind of want to bring in the primal tide, but over one approach, but like I'm not confident enough of myself to believe that. That's what I feel like I want to do. All right, so this hand's exactly what I want. Just really want to dodge a duress now. Love this card. No, no, he led with a swamp and he had to duress. Rip. So bad for me. Like, easily takes my search for Ascanta because it's the best card in my deck by a million miles. Can't even cast two of our other four cards. Still can't cast two of our other four cards. So it's also a mistake. I should have cycled cast out because I might have hit a tap land. It's definitely a mistake. Ends up not mattering, but mistakes are still mistakes, whether they matter or not. I think we'll do the old settle into Fumigate plan here. It's generally pretty good. It's hard for him to stop both of them. Okay. It was hard for him to stop both of them. And he can't, so that's good. So we take two and then gain one. We end up at 13, and he's down to three cards in hand, and we have two hard answers. Yante. Yante is a good one. I think I'm going to start with this. Pretty much putting anything on the bottom that's not lands. Alright, so we hit a land and then we kept a spell. We can cycle to cast out if we need to, but there's a good chance that we're just going to cast out his play. Probably that one. With binding backup, which is nice. Or sorry, negate backup, which is nice. We definitely can't take four damage a turn though, so we have to go ahead and play the cast out here. Have a negate if he has a Veraska or like a binding shoot. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm not willing to play that, so I guess we're on the Glimmer plan. I'm gonna take four damage and be at a really low life total. Could have been greedy. I went for it all, but. He's got three cards in hand now. The odds of them being multiple counter spells are probably high. I should have kept the rivulet. That was also a mistake. I'll get rid of one cast out. Yeah, it was a mistake to get rid of the rivulet there. 
And if he's got double counter spell, we lose. Pretty simple. Double counter spell and we lose. Well, he's got to have another green man, I guess, technically, but. I was having another green mana kind of low. All right. Well, that worked out well. It's got to naturalize. Right, well, it looks like we do have to binding that now. I wonder what card he got from us. Did he just take like an approach or something? Uh, Blossoming defense. I think we're going to just go ahead and negate it. I think I'm just going to keep the land in hand to cycle. Alright. Well, that card sucks for us, but it could be worse. Disallow and an approach. Uh, since we have the binding in hand, I think I'm fine by just slamming this approach. If he had a sensor, I think he would have used it a while ago. So anything that he draws, we can binding with disallow backup. Okay. It's kind of the same as binding with disallow backup, right? Anyway, so we know it's six cards down. And we pretty much know we would win this game had we not played badly. Right, we'll go ahead and settle here. Just want to use all of our spells. And we know it's five cards down after the cycle. Four cards down after our draw step. Still have one hard counter spell. Um, huh. We're going to cycle first. So we know it's three cards down. Interesting. Like, any creature's a threat right now because of that oasis. That's five damage next turn. Hmm. I guess it has to live three more turns after that. Okay, that's fine. Has to live three more turns after that, unless he just draws another oasis. So we know it's two cards down now. So any cycler gets to it, but I probably wouldn't play it. Right, well, we have to counterspell that one. So any cycler gets to it. All right, so that card was a good draw, and we know it's the next card. So there's a very high probability that we're going to win this game, but who knows? We could draw a field rune and make us shuffle our deck or anything. Wow, he does have Lost Legacy. Well then, didn't expect to win this game, and we may not still. He could have a hard counter spell that he's been sandbagging all this time. But the odds of him having a card counter spell there that he sandbagged in all of those he would have win. Opponent has lost connection, so this is an opponent rage quitting. This has to be a rage quit at this point. So we probably have to sit here and chat for 10 minutes game, guys. For those of you who are watching the YouTube video, I highly apologize. You should probably skip forward. Um, I 
can't cut it out. Unfortunately, I don't have a good enough upload speed, or I would. A less than the, or less than E, less than 3 EE. -E. Um, thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. So we've locked up the PD chest, unless he really is slow rolling. Which, uh, for those who weren't watching, we cyborged out one disallow, and we only brought in two negates, and we've cast two of our disallows and both of our negates, so that one card, this one card, whatever it is, is very, very unlikely to be our disallow. I mean, I shouldn't say our opponent rage quit, but it, this feels like a rage quit. We top deck the disallow and the turn he draws the lost legacy into uh, immediately disconnection when we play the game winning, the likely game winning spell. But who knows? League was going pretty quickly tonight too. Until now, we have to wait ten minutes. Potentially 10 minutes. O-O-T-E-R. For some reason, I feel like he's a big player. Eh, maybe I'm wrong. Shabber got his ninth. Our friend Matt's got seven, which is nice. Helm and OVC are both playing Red Deck Wins, but like OVC's playing a four Glorybringer build with some Captain Lanneries. He's playing like a little bit smaller build with four glory bringers out of the board. And uh, Jabber, the last I saw was on blue black chart, but I don't really talk to him often. So I don't know that he still is. A lot of the big names doing well again this season. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? I am not. I spend too much time playing uh, friendly leagues. Again, I highly apologize for the seemingly dead air. Still have five minutes to wait on, oh dude. This is unfortunately something I can't do anything about.
And he had a pretty good draw, too. I really like these Sultai Snake builds. I think they're kind of neat. I even told our opponent, good luck and to have fun. You, you. I was in here tonight and being quiet. That's not the right button at all. Noodle. Obsidian. T Sam's. Coming, hoping to watch me lose. He doesn't like watching this approach stuff. Doesn't doesn't like this approach stuff. Games wouldn't take so long if our opponents would stick around and play. Need to get me a nice little like Steam game or Flash game to play in these situations. <laughs> that really that was a really good disallow that we drew though. Right before he drew his lost legacy. Ooh, feels good. On a 13 match win streak on stream with three different decks. That's pretty sweet. Just talking to myself. Talking to myself. Should be in the next minute ish. Like we're getting pretty close. He left at 7.12 and it's 21 now, so. Don't know exactly the time stamp, you know, like the seconds, so. I just realized MTG bot's not working. Why is MTG bot not working? He's in here, isn't he? Yeah, he's in here. MTG bro, why you no work? Alright. Let's see if we can uh, snag this trophy. Got two more matches to go. We've already beat Red twice, so like I'm feeling incredibly lucky today. Feeling incredibly lucky. I kind of lost over half my viewers during the uh, AFK calls by our opponent.
Opponent, let's do some magic playing. Yeah. This hand's actually not very good, even though it deceptively looks good because it has a counter spell on two and three. Uh, this isn't the type of hands that typically amount to anything, but I have tried mulliganing these hands in the past, and I think they rate a little bit better than random sixes. Um, mostly because we have the second land we can cycle. Eh, worst case scenario, the third red deck wins today. Oh wow, he's the uh, that build. Well that's uh, even more disappointing because that's even more aggressive. And he can play around center now. Ripperoni, pepperoni. The positive note is that build generally has a couple less, uh, a couple less haste creatures. I don't know if there's any positive to that at all. So we've saw that card. Going down to 14 on turn three. I think we have to counterspell that. I think it's just too much. I don't think we could go down to 12 without a settle on our hand. Maybe if we had a settle, we can, could, could consider letting that resolve. But without the settle, I don't think we even have the consideration. Captain Lannery Storm. I think that resolves. Unfortunately, I think it also gets cast out. I guess we should move into the attack step first. Just in case he has a Beaumont Courier or something. argument that I should have let it resolve and like went all in on trying to hit one of our dudes. I don't like that too much. Feign that we need to land. Uh, I kind of want to leave that on top, but we can't. He's got land and hazard. It. We dead. He got much of anything we did, let's be honest. I think our life total is low enough that I'll actually look for a effort meltdown. Nope. Eh, yeah, cast out may keep us alive if none of those three cards are burn spells, and what's the likelihood of none of those three cards being a burn spell? Absolutely none. So burn spell and we're dead. If not, we need a miracle, baby. I think it could be four glory bringers in his hand. Nope. It's a lightning strike. And we ghosted. Yeah, as I was saying, like those like non action hands generally just do not work out. You have so much air you can draw on this deck that uh it just generally doesn't get there. And this is our general sideboard versus all of these little aggro decks are roughly the same. Will we be stopped here? Oh wow. Have our best card, but we don't have any white mana, so I think we have to throw it away. We definitely have to throw this one away. Right, we're not real likely to win mulliganing versus this deck. 
actually need this land, so I'm going to go ahead and play it first. All right, it's an uphill battle. Seems like uh, the 5-0 dream is slipping away now. So I've played uh, two decks on stream with Daring Buccaneer, and the amount of times that Daring Buccaneer has not been a 3-mana 2-2 for me has been exactly once. Happened one time for me. And we just got it in back-to-back -back game. Oh, what fun. Oh, four power on turn two, is that good? Would have been six if we didn't have a counter spell? Feels good to me. This is a winnable game, though. I actually feel like we're in better position this game than we were in game one. That being said, like, we're obviously not. Obviously not a favorite. Really? And he's got another rigging runner. He drew five of them. Guess we'll go ahead and counterspell that one because he might not play the other one. So we got a good draw. It's too slow. We had one more land, we might have kept it. That's unfortunate. Kind of got to try to find the land, I guess. The odds he's going to play a creature that attacks this turn. Kind of low. Eh. I think playing the authority was wrong. I think this is a recipe for losing. Alright, so we're dead. Eh, you hit like maybe after meltdown. Nope. Yeah, that's fun. Fourteen cards. Plus our scry. This match is incredibly bad, and he obviously drew practically his best opening. Uh, land plus uh, Hazrets, the only instead of the Crashers, the only way it could have been a worse opening. That's fine. We're two and one versus Red Deck wins, so like being two and one already feels pretty good. We were feeling pretty lucky today, though. Like how we had to wait longer for our opponent to time out the match before that than that entire match took. Alright, so let's see if we can snag the 4 1 here. This is a pretty good draw. This is the type of draws that you actually do want. Unlike the other draws that we just had that you don't want. These are the type of draws that can typically amount into something. Alright, blue black top deck of some kind. Those are typically good for us, at least game one. To see if he's the heavy count. Oh, he's like snakes. It's still pretty good for us game one, typically. Game two and three is typically real hard, though. Oh, this is kind of an interesting decision. I think this card's so good that I almost want to play it, but since we have a disallow into a glamour, I don't think I will. Just don't want to get far behind when our hand's this good. And I know I want to glamour in the next turn, so like I would rather just disallow anything this turn, basically. Obviously, don't care about that. Right, 
wouldn't mind to have land here, but there's things that we'd keep that aren't land. We're not keeping either of those, though. Eh, no white mana. Could be rough. Yeah, because we have no white mana, I think I'm actually just going to Glimmer here. Uh, definitely not keeping that. I don't think I'm keeping this approach either. I feel like I just need to try to find white mana way too badly. And that could potentially be game, because now like we've let him untap and play Scarab God while we still don't have the white mana. But the odds of him playing around Scarab God were pretty low anyway, I think. Alright, so he didn't have Scarab, so that's actually good for us. Don't care about him getting a Hydra. That does nothing in this situation. It's still whether we draw white manor or not. It said manor. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and cycle this to start the turn. Because we could get a tap land. I'm going to feign that we don't have the white to try to see. Hopefully he'll play the bristling hydra. She may not have an option to do anything other than play it anyway, so. He may just have to play it. Now, I've hit F6 here, so. Uh, Glacial Fortress into the graveyard? Yes, for sure. And we play around Spell Curse even as well. There is a scare, but we're just not super concerned about that one. Melt down to my graveyard? I don't actually think so. I think I'm actually going to keep that. We're not going to transform the Ascanta because we know we're playing the... Uh, Approach this turn, so there's no reason to put it in the graveyard. Or there's no reason to flip it. We don't get any, get any value out of it this turn. So we know we're currently seven cards down. He gets to get back one good threat here, but we do have Settle the Refuge, and we do have Ephra Meltdown, and it is a one-turn clock, assuming he doesn't have a counterspell. Or, like, he gets this attack set plus one more, rather, is what I'm trying to say. That's with the assumption he doesn't have a counterspell, of course. Really? He took the Winding Constrictor back. I wonder what's in his hand. I wouldn't have guessed that one. Take our damage down to 14. Sure. Right, so upkeep we scry. Disallow to the graveyard, yes. So that means it's six cards down. Flip it. Draw our card. Now it's five cards down. So settle plus Ascanta. Equals it's the top card of the library. We even have enough mana to throw an effort meltdown out if we really, really need to. I like opponent's build. It looks like uh, it's similar to like the Jessup's original builds. It'll be hard to beat him post board though. That's for sure. We did find a way to quote unquote present lethal.
But we have two ways to protect ourselves from that. I wonder what he has. Huh, huh. Guess just in case he has something, I'd rather put it on this one. I'd rather put it on this one. I do plan on just untapping and playing the approach though. Play around. If he's got negate main deck, I mean, he's got us, but the odds of negate main deck aren't very high. And he doesn't necessarily have us out, or we at least get one more draw step. We would even get an activation during our next turn and then flip this after the activation. So, like, we'd get one more draw step. Plus a looking for five and a mill, so like we get to see, we get to see six more cards basically. Anyway, so we saw Scarab, which means we don't want Regal Caracol, but you would bring those in versus uh, the non-blue snake decks. So pretty much just bring the same five cards in I brought earlier. Again, if you think that they're going like super large with all the Veraskas and that they're not going to have. And that was worst case scenario for us. So he has his best creature versus us. He has it on curve and he had to effort meltdown to power it. I really think my mic might have been on mute. So hopefully you guys have been able to hear us for a while. Not actually sure. He's got way too many things he can play on turn two. Like Jade Light, Rishkar, Winding Constrictor. All these things are things that I want to counterspell. So I think it's more than enough to go ahead and use this on. Um, played a rivulet this turn. We got double wrath, but it'll depend on what's in this hand, how good they are. We have a search down, which is really nice. But he's already got to draw one extra card, and the odds of him drawing another extra card are very high. Just very, very high. 
most cards go to the graveyard in this spot. There's like very few cards that we would leave up. And we'll basically settle even if he only attacks with one threat here. Hoping to be able to untap and fumigate if he has a counter spell. Or if like he adds to the board post settle. But that's unfortunate. You know. I view Duresses and Negates roughly the same in this match. And anytime that they draw two of them in their top 15 or so cards, it's pretty brutal for us. So if he also has a counter spell on top of this, you know, it's really, really brutal for us. But they play anywhere between like 5 and 8 of them spells, 5 to 10 of those spells sometimes. So like, it's, you know, it's like really, it's pretty often that that can happen, which is one of the reasons that I say this match isn't a match that you're particularly excited to play post-board. Now he has to try to decide whether he's going to negate the settle, and if he's going to negate the settle, or if he's not going to negate the spell, which one he would let me kill. I would much rather kill this than this. So if he's attacking with both, he's definitely got to negate. There's just like no chance he makes this attack, I don't think, if he doesn't have it. So it's two... Quote unquote negates in the top 13 cards. That's already a hard pill to swallow. Doesn't 100% beat us, but it's like I said, it's a hard pill. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's exciting. I'm not sure what that even means. I guess I don't want that card. I'm actually not sure what that even means. There's kind of a weird pause there too, which makes me think that it means a lot. What is this? Somebody's sending me a message. I'll try to pull this up off screen in case it's offensive or anything. Refresh my Twitch chat. So apparently my Twitch chat's not working. Huh. Wonder how long it's not been working. Does it work now? Hmm. Hopefully that fixes it. Oh, apparently my Twitch chat's not been working the entire stream. I thought I thought people just didn't love me. And I so needed my love. Hey, Gio, what's up, man? Really, Matt? You've been talking this whole time? I had no idea it wasn't working. Oh, my God. I'm on live tilt. Thank you. Thank you, Sams. I highly appreciate it, man. I, I, I just didn't think people were talking. Wow. <laughs> that blows my mind that it's been broke this whole time. I've beat two out of the three mono red decks we played. Been running pretty, pretty hot today. And then like half my viewers left when one of my opponents uh, intentionally timed out. Uh, I moved P. Sam's message and it like took my game away. No, not Veraska. That's real bad for me. This this game is uh I'm S O L. Cool thing about approaches, you can often just draw approach approach and win a game. Not likely. But like it can happen sometimes. He's not solid a glacial fortress, he is solid a planes, so I'll just go ahead and play the planes. I'm going to go ahead and cast the second search. If he wants to kill his Veraska, that's fine. If not, I get to flip it. Uh, Tomorrow for the PPTQ? I would not suggest either one of them. They're both so bad versus Red Deck wins. And, hey, Matt, thank you for the follow, man. And Red Deck wins is so popular now. Probably largely in part to Matt. <laughs> but uh, it's so popular now that I would not, I would not want to play either of those decks right now.
Um, I would play Drake over Cycling, though, if I was choosing between only those two decks. Uh, second Veraska, Ripper Rooney. So if he's going really big like this, sometimes you can just play Nezahal. I have to think about sideboarding in Nezahal for the next game. He still has negate mana up, by the way. Which is kind of like really, really cool. Those treasures are so sweet. I, I would I would pick cycling between those two. I would I would I would pick cycling between over approach. I think I think cycling is a little bit better versus the red decks. I think both of them are bad versus the red decks, but I believe it's a little bit better. Then again, there is kind of like a lot of Barontodons running around, right? Apparently, I've got a lot of messages on Twitch entirely. Yep, I got a message from P. Sams that says I need to refresh 20 minutes ago that I'm just now getting. Huh. Alright, so we basically need opponent to brick and us to get really, really lucky. How did, uh, how did your second league work out, Matt? Hopefully it worked out very well. I don't think that changes anything, does it? Yeah, that's just 6, 12, 14. It doesn't change anything. We still have to draw or we die. Jeff's good folk. We gotta have an approach and he'll not have a counter spell or are we dead or any? Three already. Man, you're, those leagues go so much quicker than our leagues. Alright. So we have no out, and he's not going to punt it away either, so. I guess we'll wait to see if he shows us maybe an extra card, but I don't see why he would. I'm going to use both rivulets on him before the game's over as well, just to see if, uh, just to see if, like, we see a lost legacy or something, because it affects how we sideboard. But I doubt he shows us another card. I'm pretty sure that he might just, like, Veraska and attack with... He might just Veraska us and, like, use Walking Ballista. So it means we have to respond to the Veraska if we're going to use the Rivulets on him to look at cards. But there's there's no there's no wrong way for him to eat this pie. Like, no matter what play he makes is obviously going to work. Unless there's some miracle world where he just, like, makes a pirate and, like, attacks the two pirates. We could beat that. We couldn't even beat that. We, like, legitimately couldn't even beat that. Well, that's disappointing. Alright, I'm just going to revel at him then. And then we're going to skizzy concede. I tap that. Come on, dog. Just kind of want to get more sideboard information. So Jade Light, nothing, nothing new there. Gaunti and the gate. All right. So we didn't see a lost legacy. So I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna say screw Nezazal. Nezazal is not particularly good versus Veraska anyway. You opened a Mox Opal yesterday? Very, very nice, man. Um, uh, Sideboarding versus this deck is a little stressful. Now we know he has Veraskas, he's got Gearhawks, he's got Hydras, so he's got like a lot of aggressive threats, and he's got a lot of top end that are just spells. So I definitely think I want to bring this disallow back. I think I'm just going to take out one cast out. I think the bindings are a little bit better than cast outs in this match. Considering taking out another sensor, but like glint on two is so strong that I think I want at least six answers to it. Uh, but the one time I got paired versus it, it 
felt okay, but like when I compare them by looking at them on paper, I don't understand how. Like I assume the red decks are just a little more aggressive, but the decks that can go really wide versus the red decks are nice. So, Glorybringer feels like the trump card in matches like those. Uh, this is this is kind of the hand we want here. We've got a million things to stop a two drop. Even if he has a discard spell, we can stop a two drop. I, I would imagine that it's not particularly good. I think four Glorybringers just is really... I think it's a really hard uh, hill for, like, any of the tribal decks to climb. Especially if the tribal decks are, like, on the draw or whatever. Alright, well, the approach is nice. I do not play... I do not play Hulk anymore because I think Scarab God's w way too popular. Also, don't think that Hulk's super good versus the red decks either. Not not in not in the blue white decks. It's better out of the Grixis decks, but I don't think it's super good versus the in the blue white decks. Like the only things that we're really getting is settles and like. Sometimes a disallow or a counter spell, but like being able to get spot removal is so much better than just being able to get a settle. Really, get value out of both sensors? That's not something I expected. But I, I I don't like them. I have zero I have zero gear hooks in this seventy five, for example. Oh, that's actually really good. Hopefully, we can survive long enough to draw three more lands because they generally tap out the turn after you play the first approach. Baffling is something I've been wanting to try again because of the popularity of the red decks. Being able to get a Kenra is really nice. Like that's that's been usually popular or usually uh, relevant for me. Tried to say popular and I like messed up. All right, we definitely have to kill that, but because of Verasco, we're going to use this counter spell instead of disallow. All right, one more land, folks. We have a shot. I'm not playing Baffling End because when I built this particular build of the deck, the red decks weren't really great. And I think that Glorybringer's better versus both... Uh, I think Glorybringer... Sorry, I think uh, Effort Meltdown's better versus both Glorybringer and Hazard. Yep, I consider Beaumont Courier and Glint Siphoner the two best cards in the format versus me. So that's... If, if the red decks are going to be popular, I definitely want some... Uh, I want some uh, baffling ends for sure. Like I, I feel like I rarely lose if it's not versus one of those two cards. It's so hard to beat the card draw off of either of those cards. Though we did beat four Beaumont Couriers on turn one tonight. That was pretty nice. Um, we got paired versus three red decks, and we got to play uh, three, four, five, seven games versus them. And the four games they had Beaumont on turn one, they lost, but that was just... Obviously, pure variance. That's not something that's going to happen particularly often. Like, we ran really well. The, the the red deck we lost to actually went, like, Buccaneer on turn one and the Buccaneer plus uh, Raging Runner on turn two. It was kind of insane. Like, he drew five of his two power one drops. I was just like, all right, I'm not beating that ever. So there's a good chance that he taps out here, but even if he doesn't tap out, he's got no pressure. We're still at 27 life. They rare, they rarely play around the second approach from your hand. They typically, if they have a spell, will play it. He could have a negate here. Not not concerned if he has a negate here. If he's got it, he's got it. We'll just find another approach later. And if he doesn't have it, we win. I don't think it's ever worth playing around, though. Yay, fun garbage card. All right. So we got a 4-1 today. We beat Red twice, and we beat Sultai Snake twice. And then we lost to Red once. So it's not too bad. This was a competitive league for those people like Matt and Ace who get on me for not playing competitive leagues. But yeah, like I was saying in the pre-match, if Red Deck's going to win, you definitely want to make some alterations to this 75. Having some more meltdowns and or baffling ends in the main deck is going to be extremely relevant. This deck's really set up to beat like the Scarab God decks in general. 
Like, I really want to play versus the Scarab God decks with this build. Yeah. <laughs> um... But uh, but if but but if you do expect a lot of the aggro decks in general, like we clearly have to alter our decks some. This card's been so good versus all the other control decks. Like, a lot of people don't like this card. I've still yet to lose a game that I've cast it. Like this this card just almost auto wins versus so many decks. But anyway, that's gonna do it for me today. I'm sorry that the chat was messed up the entire stream. I'm actually actually kind of annoyed that the chat wasn't working. Wonder who wonder who's hostable. But yeah. Um for those wanting to play this deck, if you if you're wanting to play in a more open field, I would probably do something like shave a cast out, maybe shave a disallow and an opt and add a couple baffling ends and maybe a meltdown to the main. And potentially uh there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of control in the format right now. So I'd probably take the search for Ascanta out of the sideboard and play something like the fourth cat, the fourth authority, or maybe even the sorceress Borg or sorceress spyglass or something in the sideboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there there was a lot of other good streamers on. I only had like fifteen people most of that time. Uh and then we had an opponent rage quit on us, and during that 10 minutes, like, half of the viewers left. So, yeah, I just kind of fell in love today. <laughs> hey, Wayne, what's up, man? Long time? You, you definitely got in here at the wrong time. So, Gabby's drafting. Todd's playing modern. Hoogland's playing modern, but he's playing a deck I actually like. Let's see if I can find somebody playing standard real quick. If not, I'm going to host Hoogland as well. If anybody has any comments or questions about this approach deck, though, I can spit out my random opinions beforehand. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> really, really, really sorry. Abzan tokens for the PPTQ tomorrow. Good host that, dude. Ooh, blue-black midrange. We're definitely going to host a guy playing Jabber's deck. 100% hosting this dude. I've never watched him before, but he's playing Jabber's deck, so. Actually, I'll go ahead and... I'm just gonna host Hoogland. I like Hoogland. Um, Link, um, versus just straight green-black, you're a massive favorite unless they have Lost Legacy. Uh, any deck that has Lost Legacy is really hard to win versus, though. But versus the non-Scarab God blue-black decks, you get to bring in, like, all your Regal Caracals and all your Nezazals, and you can actually win post-games after you use the Fumigate, even if they do have Lost Legacy. You just can't bring in those cards versus uh, Scarab God decks, which is why I didn't have them versus the Sultai Snakes. Um, but it's, it's pretty favored. I don't know, Matt. So I just I just have an absurdly high win rate with this deck. I think this deck uh, punishes medium players a fair amount. I actually think it has a lot of counterplay. Like I think I believe people underrate this deck. I believe Approach is the best out of all the pure control decks, and I've always just been a pure control player out of heart. Now, obviously, like Teamer's a better was was a better deck pre ban. Red deck wins is a better deck even now after the bans, but like. Like, I, I'm a control player, and I think if you're going to play a control deck, I think, like, this shell, maybe not this exact 75 is where you want to be. I actually think Drakehaven's the best deck in the format. I actually truly think Drakehaven would be the best deck in the format if a very, very, very good player was to tune it and build it. But I am such a bad player that I cannot prove it. Like, every time somebody like Michael Jacob comes in here with a big host, they just tell me a million play mistakes I've made. They're like, why didn't you 5-0 here? Like, you know, like, why didn't you win this match? Why didn't you win that match? And I'm just like, because I'm not good enough. But, like, I, I actually think the Drake Haven deck is super good. Now, I know it's hyperbole. And, like I said, I can't prove it because I don't think I'm that good of a player. But I think I think if somebody like Peter Glonkowski, I think he played it at the WMC or WMCQ. No, the World Magic Cup. It wasn't a qualifier. I think players like that, or, you know, like somebody that was willing to put the time in and effort effort versus, I actually think it's pretty good versus everything. It beats all of the decks that have Drowned Catacomb in it. 
It just smokes all of the decks that have Drowned Catacomb in it. And, like, it's pretty good versus the slower aggro decks. It's only really bad versus red deck wins. It's like, it's only really bad versus red deck wins, and I feel like you could fix it. Um, Link, I'm actually unlikely to change too much. Um, I think I want to try a couple baffling ins in the main deck. Maybe even three. Like, I want, I want to get some more early game interaction in the deck. Probably take out some of the slower cards, maybe like one of the ops. Probably take out like a cast out and an opt and play two baffling ins. Maybe a disallow and play like two baffling ins and an effort meltdown. But, uh, I got, I've been getting Pirate versus Red Deck wins a lot. Um, Sam's, uh, the seven Wrath of Gods and four Renewed Fates go a long way. Uh, PV was trying, uh, Impending, what's that white card? Impending something, the three, the two mana deal three damage to something. He was trying that card, and he was trying, like, Sorcerer's Spyglass to turn off Hazardous and Chandra's. I don't, I don't know how you fix it. But I think you might be able to get it closer to a coin flip. I don't think you're ever going to be a favorite versus a red deck. I think I, th I don't think any deck can have 100% good matches across the board. You're always going to have some tough matches. I think r the red deck wins decks always just going to be one of those tough matches. But I feel like you can make some concessions with like baffling ends and maybe um, maybe some of like the uh, going back to the authorities and the regal caracals and the sideboard now that. Uh, for Rostodon's gone, that you can get it closer to not being, you know, not scooping. Like, like this deck practically scoops versus red deck wins. Like, they still, they have to be like a 60 to 65% favorite, even though I have nine cyborg cards I bring in in the match. I just feel like, I feel like the, uh, I feel like the Drakehaven decks, like probably 40% versus red decks. And I think if you worked on it, you could probably get it to like 45 or, maybe 48 without actually sacrificing too much of the deck versus other matches. The problem with this deck is once we start like adding more cards to beat the red decks, we start losing the Grixis and we start losing the blue black chart. But like, like I don't think I'm ever going to be a favorite versus red deck wins. I'm just saying, I think that if you tune it, you can get it to a more reasonable part to where like, if you went to a grand prix and you played your 12 rounds after the buy and you got paired versus red, Four times. I feel like maybe you could win one of them on a good weekend, maybe win two or three of them. But I don't I don't think you're ever gonna take one of these Glacial Fortress decks to a tournament and just say, Oh man, I hope I play versus red. I don't just don't think that's ever gonna happen. And I could be wrong. But that's kinda why that's kinda why I like the Drake deck. The, the renewed fate and being able to gain six life is really nice out of the Drake deck, and like the uh, the synergy, not necessarily the synergy, but by how by how opponents have to play because you can have you know renewed fate, you can have cast out, you can have saddle, you can untap and have fumigate, like they just have so many cards that make opponents make decisions, and opponents can make poor decisions, and I think you pick up a lot of percentage points because of that. And, like, like, this deck has to get to 7 mana and cast an approach versus red deck wins. And then it has to draw another approach. So, like, the earliest you can ever win versus an aggro deck with this deck is turn 8. But, like, versus a red deck that's got, you know, an average draw, sometimes you can just cast Settle on 4, untap, and cast Drake and have blockers for the rest of the game. You know? Like it just it just feel it it feels closer. Like this I just feel like this deck's a lot worse versus red. I don't know I'm not I'm not arguing that either of them are a favorite versus red. I'm saying I think this deck is a bigger underdog versus red. I feel like I've rambled a long time. But but lo losing Rami Nap runes and losing uh Rampaging Ferocidon definitely made the matches much closer. I mean, we beat it twice today, so, like, it's not, it's no longer one of those matches to where, like, when you get paired versus it, you just lose. It's one of those matches to where you hope you don't get paired versus it, but you have some chance if you do. But when, 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 when Ramunap, when Ramunap Runes and Rampaging Ferocidon was in the format, you just 
can ba- you could basically s- just save your time and go get a snack or something. You you was not winning that match unless it was one of those absurd corner cases of pure luck or whatever. But anyway, I'm going to hop off here. I'm going to host Jeff, and I'm going to get some dinner and watch a movie and wake up and play the Pro Tour. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair, Sam's. That's fair. Well, Red Deck Wins is probably the best deck in the format, and I'm, I'm highly willing to concede that. If I was going to PPTQ tomorrow, or if I was playing the Moto PTQ on tomorrow, like if I was doing any of those things, if I was going to a Grand Prix this weekend, or an SCG this weekend, I would be sleeving up four hazards in my deck, and I would probably put a little emphasis, like Matt did for the Mirror, might play Pia's in the main, like Matt was doing today. I might, uh, but yeah, um, I, I would I would definitely be sleeving up four hazards if I was going to a large tournament with a prize I really wanted. I, w- I wouldn't even come close to playing this deck in those events right now. Red deck wins has to become a lot less popular for me to want to play this deck. But because it's our baby, I'm going to continue to play it at least once a week on stream every week. Because it is bay. And this this is my favorite magic card of all time. So just getting to play it's fun. This card is so fun. But anyway, I'm hopping out of here. Thank you guys for the follows. Sorry that it was on mute the entire day. Thank you for drawing it to my attention, Sams. And take care, everybody. We definitely out. Go enjoy watching Hoogland play the Jerry T deck. I don't know how close it might be. I don't know how close it is to his build, but that deck looks sweet on camera today. Take care, everybody.